A Less Than Royal Narcissist. Part 28. Coterie Control. In Part 27 of this insightful and informative series, I explain to you the way that the coterie works. All narcissists have a coterie. The coterie is made up of willing but unwitting individuals, which can include empathic individuals, other narcissists, and normal people who are utilized to carry out the machinations and desires of the narcissist to achieve the prime aims of fuel and control, character traits, and residual benefits. All narcissists have a coterie. For some, this might only be two or three people. For others, it could extend beyond a dozen. And in certain instances, the coterie, where dealing with greater narcissists than ultra, is extensive, running to dozens of individuals. But for most narcissists, you'll be looking at roughly around about a dozen people that form the coterie. Individuals who are supportive on the side of the narcissist, and they do so willingly and voluntarily. They're not coerced into doing that, not in a way that they would understand coercion. They sympathise with the position of the narcissist. They feel a sense of obligation towards them, perhaps because they're family members. Meghan Markle has a coterie, and we are seeing now more prominent use of it in order to assert control. And in recent days, this has reared its head more often as a consequence of what has happened following the interview with Oprah Winfrey. With regard to Meghan Markle, she has an unconscious need for control at all times. All narcissists have that need for control. We are hypersensitive to the issue of control. And indeed, you will do certain things which will affect the narcissist's control and you didn't even realise that you were doing it. Indeed, in many instances, you don't intend it. But it's not how you see your actions. It is how it's perceived by the narcissist, either consciously, where an aware narcissist, or unconsciously, where an unaware narcissist. And therefore, the activity that you engage in, where you wound or provide challenge fuel, threatens the narcissist's inherent need for control, which results in the narcissist responding through one of the three assertions of control. For Meghan Markle, she will face repeated threats to her control, and therefore she has to respond in a particular way to assert control. The chief instrument over which she must assert control, of course, is the intimate partner primary source, Prince Harry. And we have seen a number of public demonstrations of this method of control, notably in the course of the Oprah interview with the physical touches that she makes, the interruptions, the way that she went first to speak. All of that amounts to a form of control over him. In the interview, control was asserted over Oprah. For instance, the repeated use of right at the end of the sentence, which is done to manipulate, albeit unconsciously, the listener into agreement, thus signalling control. This control on Meghan Markle's part extends to her child. Of course, a child is very easy to control, particularly a young one. Stick a Farley's rusk in their gob or give them a toy and they're under control. No problems there. It means controlling staff members, and there have been allegations about bullying, and that is a form of control that is utilised by the narcissist. Of course, remember, the majority of narcissists will believe that they are the victim and that their response isn't bullying, but merely, I was having to assert myself in the face of difficult provocation from this individual. They don't see it as bullying. Staff members journalists, members of the public, anybody that comes on the radar of Meghan Markle must be controlled, and the narcissism will select an appropriate method of the assertion of control and select whether it is to be benign or malign. Often, a benign method will be utilised, particularly where the facade is in play. So, for example, 
in the course of the interview with Oprah Winfrey. Meghan Markle asserted control through compliments, through appearing to be pleasant, through pity play, through triangulation. She, of course, didn't say, you better fucking agree with me, Oprah, or you're going to get bitch slapped. Some narcissists would behave in that way, the less evolved ones. But that, of course, is a narcissist that doesn't utilise a facade. They are the proverbial wrecking ball. But Meghan Markle does operate a facade, and therefore behaving in that manner where the cameras are upon her means that her narcissism instinctively guides her behaviour to ensure that she doesn't behave in a particular way which damages the facade. A narcissist that doesn't operate with a facade naturally has no concerns in that respect. And therefore, those are the narcissists that come up to and insult people in front of other people, that might slap their wife at a dinner, not caring about the reaction of anybody else. Uh, those are particularly haphazard narcissists. But this need for control is near constant. The narcissist doesn't need it when sleeping, of course. And must assert this over anybody that the narcissist interacts with and comes on the radar. And that includes the public at large. So whilst Meghan Markle has asserted that, that she doesn't read the press, we know that that's hypocrisy because she has claimed that she's hurt by various remarks and the hounding that has taken place in the press. She will luck because she can't help but luck because she wants both the adoration and in amongst all of that, she will see the criticisms. And of course, the criticisms will be mentioned to her by various lackeys in their camp. Therefore, where public criticism has originated, this reaches the ears of Meghan Markle, necessitating a response because it's a threat to the control. And the first instance by which we see this appertains to the criticisms about the Sussexes speaking out against the royal family, whilst Harry's 99-year-old grandfather, Prince Philip, was in hospital. Once again, Gail King rides into battle on behalf of Meghan Markle. As a member of the Coterie, she feels moved to speak on behalf of Meghan Markle, no doubt as a consequence of what Meghan Markle has said to her and might have, in certain instances, been direct about it, saying, Gail, there's been some criticism about Harry and I for speaking out against the royal family while Harry's grandfather was in hospital. We need to correct that position. Perhaps when you have an opportunity, you could say this. Often it's more subtle and would be more along the lines of, it upsets me that people are criticising Harry and me because we appear to have put that interview out whilst the Duke of Edinburgh was unwell. That wasn't the case. Actually, what we did was we were aware of the situation and we had a plan to delay the interview if his health was to deteriorate. Gail King then may well say, I hadn't realised that, Megan. I'll make mention of that for you. Would you? Oh, that's awfully kind of you. Thank you. Or, Gail King decides to make mention of it anyway, believing herself doing the right thing to be supportive of the Sussexes. This originates, of course, from Meghan Markle. She perceives the threat to her control by this public criticism of the decision to have the interview aired whilst the Duke of Edinburgh was lying very unwell in hospital. And therefore, as a consequence of that threat to control, her narcissism states, you need to do something, this is occurring in the unconscious, of course, to assert control, and therefore... Rather than speak out, utilise a member of the coterie to speak on your behalf. Therefore, issue some kind of pity play to the member of the coterie, thus controlling them, which will then cause them to speak on your behalf. And you can use them as a mouthpiece for a further manipulation over the public at large. Accordingly, many people did criticise the Sussexes for speaking out against the royal family whilst the Duke of Edinburgh was in hospital. And King as we know, is a friend of Oprah Winfrey and the Duchess of Sussex, and therefore part of the coterie, stated that the couple was aware of Prince Philip's situation and that they had a plan to delay the interview if his health were to take a turn for the worse. King told a caller during her Sirius XM show, just so you know, 
They had done that interview before Prince Philip went into the hospital, and if something, God forbid, had happened to him, the interview would not have run at this particular time. Now, it's highly likely that it was recorded before Prince Philip went into the hospital. Invariably, these things are recorded in advance and then allowed for editing, etc. Indeed, as I understand it, there was somehow three hours of footage, no doubt, of Meghan Markle looking particularly earnest, staring into the middle distance, trying to coax a few tears out, and was edited down to the running time of the programme. Possibly also to allow Oprah Winfrey to recover from being duped so readily by the machinations. Nevertheless, it is in all likelihood that the recording was prior to when it was aired and prior to when Prince Philip went into the hospital. However, if there was any genuine emotional empathy, knowing what was going to be said because it had been recorded, knowing that Prince Philip was now in hospital, an individual with emotional empathy would have said, don't air it yet. Wait. He's unwell. He's in hospital. He's ill enough to be in hospital, so it's serious. But no, there was no emotional empathy exhibited towards the royal family or Prince Philip as a member of that family. There was a sense of entitlement to speak out because the need to assert control through the interview was huge. There was a lack of accountability to those other people in the royal family for the lack of accountability for how they might feel about this being done, whilst a member of them was seriously ill in a hospital. And instead, there will, what has been done is a revision of history, which is a common manipulation of the narcissist, whereby the narrative is altered, changing the past to fit the now. And therefore, Meghan Markle has stated to Gail King, that there was a plan to have prevented the interview from running if the situation had deteriorated. I doubt that was the case. Instead, at the point after the interview, when the criticism of the decision to run the interview arose, this affected Meghan Markle's control. Her narcissism adjusted history to tell her actually there was a plan to delay it if his condition deteriorated. And therefore, this was then stated to Gail King as a member of the coterie to then say that on their behalf. The fact is, the failure to prevent the interview going out in the first place whilst Prince Philip was in hospital demonstrates that this apparent concession is nonsense and is a part of a revision of history. So what we see here with regard to the narcissistic dynamic is the assertion of control, it is the revision of history, which is a manipulation, it is a use of the coterie in order to manipulate, it is acting with a sense of entitlement, a lack of accountability, and also a lack of emotional empathy. It's also arisen that Certain predatory practices have arisen through a private investigator discussing digging for tabloid news about Meghan Markle. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle spoke out against predatory practices after a private investigator stepped forward to talk about digging up information on Meghan Markle for the UK tabloid The Sun early on in the couple's relationship. Daniel Portley Hanks, a Los Angeles-based private investigator, told the New York Times and BBC News that he was hired by Rupert Murdoch, another narcissist, by the Rupert Murdoch-owned tabloid, to tap into a database of restricted information to pull up detailed information on Markle, her extended family, and her ex-husband, including home addresses, cell phone numbers, social security numbers, and more. He was apparently paid $2,000. Portly Hank's role in providing this information to The Sun was reported some time ago. But there was a report 
on his investigations about Markle in 2016. Following, of course, when Murdoch said that the phone, um, that there would be no longer a use of private investigators following the 2011 phone hacking scandal at the defunct uh, tabloid News of the World. Portly Hanks stated that his 2016 information also pointed the sun onto Markle's father, Thomas Markle. Portly Hanks stated pretty much everything I found out, they could find out themselves using legal means with the exception of the social security numbers, Portly Hanks told the BBC. When you have that information, it's the key to the kingdom. Accordingly, his revelation about there being the unlawful use of information about Meghan Markle, of course, amounts to a threat to control. The, fa the fact that he has been digging up information about her threatens Meghan Markle's control. And when she learns about this, and it's aired in a public fashion, this continues to threaten the control. Therefore, the narcissism has to respond to it, and states... There is a threat to the control which now needs to be addressed. Again, Meghan Markle utilises the coterie. And this time, an individual called Toya Holness, a spokesperson, and as such is part of the coterie, asserts control on the part of Meghan Markle. Now, of course, somebody prying into your personal information would upset anybody and would affect a non-narcissist and a narcissist. But the effect is different when it comes to a narcissist because the behaviour goes to the issue of control. An individual who's not a narcissist would feel perhaps violated, annoyed at this infringement. An unaware narcissist would talk about feeling violated perhaps or feeling angered by this intrusion, perhaps even fearful. But that would be their narcissism allowing them to express themselves in such terms. But what's really going on underneath the surface, surface rather, is that this is a threat to control. And so the narcissism says, talk about how you feel violated and how that this is an awful thing and something needs to be done about it in order to assert control. The, but what's really going on, although you don't know this because you are an unaware narcissist, is that this is occurring as a consequence of there being a threat to your control, and you need to do something in response to nullify that threat. In this instance, learning about Portly Hank's monkey business, Meghan Markle, through her coterie, has Toya Holness state in a statement to USA Today that the couple feel that today is an important moment of reflection for the media industry and society at large as this investigative report shows that the predatory practices of days past are still ongoing, reaping irreversible damage for families and relationships. Of course, such predatory practices are to be discouraged, and in many instances are unlawful. But what's important to remember is that statement issued by a coterie member is part of the presentation of the facade, because it's coming from a narcissist on behalf of a narcissist. And notice the grandiosity in it. Today is an important moment of reflection for the media industry and society at large. What? Some dude from Los Angeles who's probably been rooting through some rubbish bins to unearth information. This amounts to an important moment of reflection for the media industry and society at large. It's not like a pandemic or an asteroid hitting a continent. Or sweeping unemployment as a consequence of a global downturn. It's information about one person. Yes, the behaviour shouldn't have been engaged in. That's not the issue. The point is, this response is the assertion of control, the maintenance of the facade, and is riddled with the grandiosity of the mid-range narcissist. And there is also the pity play in terms of reaping irreversible damage for families and relationships. Accordingly, this revelation threatened control. The coterie member was the recipient of a pity play, or perhaps even an aggressive observation about it, 
And then the coterie member speaks in order to assert control to the world at large as a consequence of this threat by managing the facade, issuing grandiosity, showing a sense of entitlement to talk in such ways, and again amounts to an assertion of control. The third instance of the coterie in action comes with regard to an issue appertaining to the provision of information by US outlets compared to the British media. The online article from Variety written by Minori Ravindran reported, in one week, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's nuclear CBS interview with Oprah Winfrey became a global television event. Well, it was certainly seen around the globe, but I certainly suspect of the 7.8 billion people on the planet, less than 1% actually witnessed it. Nevertheless, it talks about how it toppled incendiary presenter Piers Morgan from Good Morning Britain and now leaves a sizable question mark over Sharon Osbourne's future as a co-host at the talk. But it's the war of words being played out across the Atlantic that has prompted extensive pearl clutching from British royal watchers, puzzled by US outlets controlling the narrative about the British royal family. In the latest jaw-dropping development, Gail King, a co-host on CBS This Morning and Winfrey's BFF, revealed on March 16th that Prince Harry has been in touch with his father, Prince Charles and brother of Prince William. And of course, I've covered that in part 27. However, this is where it becomes of greater interest. The article states, to see a major update on private family conversations revealed by an American broadcaster rather than the British press is unprecedented, says royal commentator Richard Fitzwilliams. If you'd told me, I wouldn't have believed it. A flabbergasted Fitzwilliams tells Variety. This is one of the royal family's worst nightmares. Katie Nicholl, royal editor for Vanity Fair and the author of Harry and Meghan, Life, Loss and Love, says she was really shocked to see the couple using Gail King as their mouthpiece, not least because we heard so much from them previously that we didn't expect there to be a running commentary from their friends in the media. This belies the lack of understanding about what people are dealing with. To say that she was shocked to see Gail King as a mouthpiece is indeed accurate. She is shocked. But I'm not. And those of you who have had dealings with narcissists will not be shocked. The fact is, Gail King is used as a mouthpiece because she's a member of the coterie. And the point about the narrative coming from US outlets rather than British ones is, of course, because the British royal family is largely maintaining silence about these matters, adhering to the Queen's mantra of never complain, never explain, and maintaining a dignified silence. Of course, there are instances where such a silence can result in criticism. This was most obvious following the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, in 1997. However, for the most part, this is a useful tactic, and something I'll be expanding on in the forthcoming video, The Firm Fights Back. But here, it's no surprise that it's US outlets that are coming out with the information rather than British ones, because Meghan Markle's team will be providing information to these US outlets as part of her need to assert control by issuing statements, utilising members of the coterie to speak on her behalf, to deal with the threats to control as they arise. And as I explained earlier in this video, those threats to control happen on a daily basis basis. And therefore, as a consequence of this, the fact remains that Meghan Markle needs to assert control whenever a threat occurs, and her narcissism is choosing to do it in a direct method through the coterie, rather than remaining silent. And that's interesting, because it's indicative of the type of narcissist that she is, because one thing that mid-range narcissists often engage in is the fact that they just will not fucking shut up. They talk and talk and talk. They will tell lie after lie after lie. And as I advise the many people that I deal with in consultation who are involved in a court situation with a mid-range narcissist, 
I explained to them that one of the big advantages that they have, alongside gaining my insight, is the fact that give the narcissist enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Mid-range narcissists can't help but keep talking, and in so doing, they create problems for themselves. They contradict themselves, demonstrate hypocritical behaviour, as we've witnessed with Meghan Markle. And they keep talking, because their narcissism is basically saying, you need to deal with this, this threat to your control by saying something about it, and then the, the next threat to control, say something about it. And it doesn't matter if what you say to threat number one is this consistent with what you say with regard to threat number two, that doesn't matter, because we, the narcissism, will blind you to that through the process of compartmentalization. The article continues by stating, Buckingham Palace is likely very worried, but notably is in uncharted territory and won't know how to respond, Fitzwilliam says. I disagree with that, but more on that on another occasion. He states, It's not possible to know how on earth you can have a conversation with Harry and then have Gail King report it. And again, this shows the naivety of this particular individual who doesn't understand the way that narcissism works. It's very simple. Prince Harry speaks to his family. He then, as a codependent to Meghan Markle, tells her what's going on. Or she listened to the conversation. I wouldn't put it past. Indeed, you'll recall that in the past I've explained that when it was the Sandringham Summit, the Queen denied Meghan Markle the opportunity to join in by telephone because the Queen could not be sure who was listening at the other end. The Queen has Meghan Markle pegged in that regard as untrustworthy. She will not say as such. She's too savvy to do so. But she realises that one would not trust such an individual. And so similarly, it's highly likely that when Prince Harry is chewing the cud with Pa and Bro, Meghan Markle's either listening on hands-free or is sticking one of her ears into the phone to listen to what's being said or, at the very least, demanded to be told thereafter what was actually happening. And Harry, of course, wanting to keep her content, probably told... Harry, we need to know what's going on. We're in this together, remember? Team us. He relays the information, and then Meghan Markle has it. And, of course, because she's a narcissist and has a sense of entitlement, no boundary recognition, no emotional empathy for Charles, Harry, or William, she then passes it on to the mouthpiece that is Gail King. So with Mr Fitzwilliam stating, it's not possible to know how on earth you can have a conversation with Harry, then have Gail King report on it, well, you may think so. Uh, Mr. Fitzwilliams, because you don't understand narcissism, and that's fair enough. But the reality is, we all know how that has happened, because it's part of utilising the coterie for the purpose of asserting control. Accordingly, this need to control the narrative by speaking to US outlets, meaning that the British outlets aren't coming out with information, all demonstrates, again, the further assertion of control of Meghan Markle and using members of the coterie to then provide information to US media outlets. The article continues by, staying, by stating, indeed, there's awareness among British media about Markle and Prince Harry's revelations in their interview with Winfrey. UK outlets have focused efforts largely on debunking points made by the couple regarding their sons Archie's eligibility for a title, rather than interrogating racism within the royal family or a lack of mental health support for Markle. In part, that's likely to be the case because the relevant individuals see through the fact that the issues of racism and mental health are just part of a facade. And I explained in The Firm Strikes Back the dangerous game that Meghan Markle is playing by hijacking those causes for her own extension of control. So again, we see that control is being asserted by the narcissist through the coterie in these three examples. And yet again, the ongoing situation involving the Duke and Duchess of Sussex provides you with a meaningful and instructive insight into the way that a narcissist behaves with regards to the ongoing and repeated daily threats to control and in this instance, it's done directly, but through the coterie. 
Please ensure that you share this video so other people may benefit from understanding more about the dynamic of narcissism, utilising a high-profile example, that you like it and you subscribe to my channel. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.